cutting precise gear teeth is still the biggest milestone in my build my own watch project. <laughs> and over the last two months, I built this tool and it just transformed my life. It gives me the ability to precisely control the rotational position of my lathe spindle and that's just a big deal. So let's have a look how I made that happen. First of all, I needed some type of base plate or fixed ring plate. So when I mount something extra to my lathe, I know where things are located in relation to the spindle center. And I decided to design this base plate in Fusion 360 and have it laser cut by a vendor. And this worked out quite well and with some PVD coating in black, this uh, looks also very nice. The idea of this digital indexer came while browsing for a rotary table for a different purpose. And I thought about using the rotary table itself connected with some belts to the lathe spindle and then have some sort of device that very precisely reads out the rotational position. And this is how this whole project came together. The feature that's being turned in the background right here is the most interesting thing about this part and it's a locating feature designed to keep this part concentric to the rotary table. Right here I've uh, questioned everything <laughs> and yeah, maybe if you have two clamps for your rotary table just use them. <laughs> but I finished all the holes and then we can uh, go to the next step. At this point, I did the first assembly on the attachment for the rotary table, located the feature into the groove onto the rotary table and tightened them down with two screws. And these two screws will definitely be exchanged later in the video <laughs> because the heads, uh, the profile is much too tall and, but I will figure it out uh, much later into the project. <laughs> This is the first of two 3D prints I commissioned for this project. And it's a little table that gets mounted onto the back of the rotary table and will house the actual brain of this whole operation. This Arduino board right here in combination with the rotary encoder will be used to do the degrees of rotation calculation. And I've used the official DFR robot documentation and a little bit of ChatGPT and I finally got it working. And you can see me right here testing it for the first time and seeing it work was quite amazing. Next up in the design of the Arduino board was some type of switch I could toggle to reset the degrees back to zero and implementing it was quite straightforward. And in the last step, I've connected an OLED screen to display the output of the board. Fitting all of this into this tiny case, uh, together with my poor wiring and poor soldering, uh, was quite a challenge. And I've uh, questioned it the whole time. In the end, I had to do a little workaround and pulling out the wires through the case and sticking them back into the case <laughs> because I just couldn't get them to fit. But in the end, it worked out somehow and it looks a little bit janky, I know, but it's working, I'm fine with that. And here it is on its designated place. Being able to rotate my lathe spindle very precisely is one of the tasks I needed to tackle. But in the end, when I want to cut out the gear teeth or do some milling, drill the off-center holes into the main plate, I know I need some type of spindle lock. So the lathe spindle, after it's rotated to the position I want it to be, is locked into place, nothing is moving and I can do my machining operation. 
this design for this spindle lock is quite out of my depth and I would definitely need a milling machine to make it precise and straightforward. But in the end, I had to go back to my hand tools. And of course, this is tedious and time consuming for such a part. And I would have loved to have a milling machine for this part. I think the most interesting detail is I've used a Healy coil for the first time for this part to protect the threads inside the aluminium and the amount of force I have to put in there to actually tighten it enough to lock the spindle, it would definitely have ripped out the thread in the aluminium without the Healy coil the first time I tried it. So I'm very happy I researched it and I've used it here and I will definitely keep on using them. The spindle lock is also the last part in the whole assembly and it's all laid out here. And the second 3D printed part in this project was this rotary encoder holder and there is version 2 of it and there is version 1. <laughs> and I needed to figure out the right offset in the 3D print to tension the belt right. And I finally got the dimensions right and it just fits onto the laser cut base plate and it's held in place with two M8 screws. Placed onto the rotary encoder is number one of three of the tooth belt discs and with the spindle lock in place we can go to the next step of assembling the rotary table. Here you can see the extra flat M5 screws I mentioned earlier and with the second tooth belt disc placed onto it, we can take the belt and fit it into place. The third one is placed onto the spindle itself and with the second belt everything is connected and with the belts tightened we can screw it down and check the tension on the belts. Time for the first test run. Seeing all of this linked together in motion was such an amazing feeling. All these tools I built on this greater journey of building my own watch. It's an up and down of ideas and designs and execution and revisions and it's just amazing when it works. And here you can see me doing the final test of 10 degree increments into a brass stock and dialing in the last 10 degree increment. And I'm always locking the rotary table and the spindle, then doing the cutting operation and it's on point. And that's so cool. <laughs> and in the next video, I'm gonna finish my watchmaker's milling attachment so we can finally approach cutting the first gear.